Hi, this is Ryan Regan, the founding partner of HX Staff. You're watching this video right now, I suppose you're very confused or you're stuck on your IOP. Okay, so the IOP is a 15 minute presentation on any text that you study at school. It's a very creative internal assessment. But in this video, I'm going to give you some concrete strategies that you can use to get a level 7 in your IOP. Okay, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, go through, first of all, the criteria of the IOP so that you're aware. Secondly, more importantly, I'm going to give you some basic uh, IOP outlines that you can follow, like basic frameworks, structures that you can follow to help to you to ensure a level 7. Okay, so you follow this framework and you use, your, use a bit of your creativity as well, then you have no problem getting a level 7. Okay, and moreover, we're giving up free IOP samples. So if you just register in the link below in the description, uh, we can, we're going to send you videos, IOP recorded videos of the IOP presentation that got a level seven that can really help you as well. Okay. So let us look at uh, the basic, uh, basic, okay, basic introduction of the IOP first. Your teacher have probably told you if you're not aware. So. You know, the IOP is basically a 10 to 15 minute presentation. It's a free presentation format. You, basically, you can do whatever you want for your presentation as long as it's involving a text that you study at school, right? So you need to come up with your own topic, okay? And it, it is 15% of the marks. Okay, so what, as I said just now, what I'll do in this video is I'm going to, later I'm going to go through the rubric with you so that, to, so that you will know what you need to be aware of. Now, I'll give you some presentation frameworks that you can follow. Although this is a creative assessment, I'll give you some guidelines that you can follow to come up with your topic and to design your presentation. And if you follow that the framework I'm teaching you, it will dramatically increase your chances of getting a level seven because the framework that I suggest to you will be you are the framework that level seven students have used in the past. Okay, so just hang in there uh, and watch the remainder of this video. Let's look at the marking criteria. The first criteria is knowledge and understanding, okay? So to get full marks on this, you have to first, the topic you choose need to be literary in nature because ultimately, you want to show that you have a literary understanding of the text that you study, okay? You need to show your understanding of the text from a literary perspective. Ultimately, this is an assessment for the literature course, right? So it needs to be literary in nature, the topic that you choose, okay? Basically, you need to analyze literary devices in your presentation, okay? And then secondly, you need to show a deep insight into the topic you choose. So for example, if you're studying, a, if, you're, if, your, if your presentation is about character, then you, you better show a deep understanding about that character in your presentation, okay? And there needs to be a thoughtful and thoughtful interpretation of the text, okay? so. It's kind of like, um, actually, it's kind of like the paper too. You need to have a good, show a good literary understanding of the text and a good understanding of the topic that you chose, okay? Next two criteria, they, are, they come hand in hand, so I'll explain them together. It's presentation and language. So presentation, what does that mean? It means that your the presentation format is effective, okay? There's a well-structured and logical presentation format. For this, if you watch this video, if you finish and follow my advice to you in the re remainder of this video, you should have no problem. Because I'm gonna to suggest to you some presentation formats that you can use for the IOP that can easily get you a level seven. So if you follow the format that I'm going to teach you later, you should have no problem getting a high mark for presentation. And of course, presentation and language, besides the presentation format itself, it also includes how well you speak, like whether you're eloquent and whether you know your, your uh, whether you have eye contact with the audience, whether you're a good presenter, basically, and the words that you use. Do you, so to get good marks for that, number one, I would suggest you to um, make sure you use literary terms in your presentation, right? So when you talk about literary devices, make sure you use the correct terms, okay? And make sure you speak in a rather formal register. So use rather academic words when you present, okay? And next is like basically being confident and speaking in a clear manner and the right tone, okay? Being a good presenter. So to improve that, I would suggest you to record your pre own presentation. So before your actual presentation, you should do your own, do your presentation at home, record yourself, and basically make sure that you, you're a, you're, you, you present in a presentable manner, basically, right? So speak in a confident way. So as I said just now, we have, um, we register in the link below. We're gonna send you, we're gonna send you uh, videos of IO, of top students presenting the IOP. So you can follow their, their tone of voice and then you should be
good to go with regards to presentation and language. Okay. So now let's talk about the presentation frameworks you can follow. So in terms of the IOP, there are two main ways that you can you can do it. The first is using a more creative way. So for example, doing role plays, right? Or um, like being being an actor, basically doing a role play, right? Or you can it can be entirely analytical. So analytical, where you're just explaining like basically uh, explaining your insights into the topic in a very formal manner. So it can be creative or analytical. So, um, so I'll, I'll, so if you like the creative format or you like the analytical format, both are okay. And I'm going to give you a, a presentation. I'll give you a presentation idea for both cases now. Okay. So now let's go through the creative format. So the idea I have to you is you can compare the portrayal of women or any other groups in two texts. So for example, compare the portrayal of women in. Uh, Romeo and Juliet and uh, the Great Gatsby, something like that. Okay, so it can be any two texts that you study. So the creative format I would suggest to you is you can pair up with the partner and then you can perform a play where you can act as the author, the author in one book, where you meet with a, the, a character in another book, and you guys compare, engage in a conversation to exchange views. So for example, you can be you can act as Shakespeare meeting. A character in *The Great Gatsby* to, to exchange uh, to exchange views, basically have a conversation, right? So I know this may sound confusing, but as I said, we have a sample video that we can send to you. So just fill in the form in below, and you can get you can see an example of how this is done. Okay, but basically, if 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 you follow this creative format, if you do this in a play, it is very important for you to. to discuss the literary devices and connect their analysis into the major themes of the book. Because ultimately, your presentation, even if it's creative, it needs to be literary in nature. You need to show, you need to basically um, uh, be analytical, okay? You need to show an understanding of the text. So don't stray away from a literary focus, okay? So it needs to, uh, it needs to be, li it still needs to be literary study of the text, okay? And you still need to show an interpretation of the text that you study. Now, before you actually do the play, you, you need to include a rationale. So in the rationale, you need to explain why you use this format, uh, why the style was chosen. So for example, you can say, this style was chosen to show the conflicting views between the, uh, to, to show the different views in terms of the portrayal of women in two different areas, right? Something like that, okay? So we basically need to explain why you choose that format. So for example, in the, in the, in the uh, example I give you, you can explain because, because this using a play format can, uh, as I said, it can show the, uh, it can show, it can effectively show a contrast between the portrayal of women in two different work. Okay. As I said, you can download the sample, just fill in the form. We can send the sample and give you a, you can see an example for yourself. It will be very easy for you. Okay. Um, yeah, so as I said, the performance needs to be insightful. So it needs to be in your presentation itself, in the play itself, you need to show uh, interpretation of text that you study. Okay. And then in your rationale, before you actually perform your play, you need to explain why you choose that format. Okay. To the analytical type. If you're doing the analytical type, it's basically like writing an essay but speaking the essay, okay? So you focus on a specific topic. For example, you can focus on how the author characterizes a certain character or how the author develops a certain theme. It's up to you really. It's very open-ended, okay? So pick a topic that, you're, that interests you and you believe you can figure out enough things to speak for 10 to 15 minutes. So it's kind of like an essay. You come up with a thesis, right? Develop a thesis, introduce your topic, and then in your body, it's just like a normal essay. We suggest that you separate it into three body paragraphs, okay? So use three different body paragraphs to support your thesis, okay? So it can, you can divide your body paragraphs by literary devices or features, however you want, however you, way you want. I think of it like an essay, three body paragraphs, right? And then uh, obviously then you need to come up with a conclusion, right? So summarize 
your arguments and then how that support your thesis. So again, if you want an example of a, of a literature of this analytical type of IOP, fill in the form below and we will send it to you. Okay, and if you, if you have any comments, feel free, feel free to, uh, any questions, feel free to comment and uh, I hope you find this video useful and I'll see you next time.